Namaste everybody. Hello, welcome to the mat. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, this class is an introduction to classic Hatha Yoga. So, um, in this class we're going to have a little bit of focus on the prana or the breathing in the beginning. Breathing is really, really important in yoga. In fact, if you do nothing but focus on the breath, you're doing yoga. And then we're going to do a few different asanas, a few different postures to kind of stretch and strengthen. And we're going to finish with a little nice snoozy shavasana at the end, a little relaxation at the end. This is Bean, by the way. She, uh, she often joins me on the mat. She'll wander off in a minute. So let's hop onto the mat, get comfortable. Now I'm sitting on a bolster. Uh, a yoga bolster. You can sit on a cushion or a block or anything you want to, or you can just sit cross-legged. So just bring yourself into a nice easy cross-legged position. Prop up your knees with cushions if you need to. Go and chop yourself you go now. It's okay. Yeah. She wants some attention. She always picks her moments. So sitting in cross-legged, gently close the eyes. Lift up from the crown of the head. Let the shoulders drop away from the ears. If you want to lift the shoulders up and kind of roll them back, just feel them drop away from the ears. Feel those shoulder blades slide down the back. And just take a moment here to bring your focus onto you. So this is your practice. You deserve this time. Just focus on yourself. And maybe your mind is jumping all over the place. It's that monkey mind, just let it slow down. So thoughts may wander in. Just firmly push them to one side. And as your mind begins to slow down, just focus on the present. So forget about the past, forget about the future. Let's just focus on the here and now. So as the mind slows, we're going to bring the focus onto the breath. So take one hand to your abdomen, one hand to the top of your chest, and I always like to put my thumb and my forefinger on the collarbones. And now as you take a nice slow inhale through the nose, just focus on the, on the belly pushing out, on the ribs rising out and up, on the collarbones feel like they're lengthening. And then as you slowly exhale through the mouth, the collarbones feel like they're shortening, the ribs move down and in, the belly's pulled into the spine. So let's take a deep inhale. And a slow exhale through the mouth like we're steaming up a mirror. This time on the inhale, I'm going to count you. So let's inhale for five, four, three, two, one. At the top of the inhale, hold the breath for five, four, three, two, one. Now exhale slowly through the mouth for six, five, four, three, two, one. One, let's do that again. Inhale for six, five, four, three, two, one. Hold the breath for six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale slowly through the mouth for seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one. Now keep that nice. 
nice, long, slow, steady breathing going. And just return your hands to your knees or your thighs. And then after your next exhale, just gently flick open the eyes. So prana, that control of the breath, takes a little bit of practice. Don't worry if you kind of got to the top of your inhale and I'm still counting, you can't inhale anymore. It doesn't matter. To help with that, the more you exhale, the longer your exhale is, then the more you'll be able to inhale on the next breath. It's just about bringing a little bit of awareness to the breath. I want you to keep the awareness as we go through the postures, as we go through the asanas. If you're finding something difficult, just bring your focus back to your breath. Okay, so I'm coming off this bolster now. And maybe you can rock forward, maybe you're okay on your hips and your knees. Maybe you can rock forward and come onto your hands and knees. And if that's not comfortable for you, just swing your legs around any way you can and come onto your hands and knees. So we're going to do some postures called cat-cows. These are really, really common, really good for the spine. I love doing these. So there's lots of alignment tips here. So have your wrists underneath your shoulders, shoulder width apart. Have your hips underneath your knees, hip width apart. Have your feet Flat. You can put your shoelaces flat. It's okay if you want to put your toes on the mat. I prefer to have shoelaces flat on the mat. And then just check that your heels are in line with your knees. Push the mat away with your hands, with your shins and with your feet. Turn the biceps forward slightly to open the chest. Suck in that core. Reach the crown of the head forward, reach the tailbone backwards. So this is your tabletop posture. So find this posture. All right, so now as you take a slow inhale, you drop the navel down, you tilt the pelvis up, you lift the heart, you open the heart, you open the throat, you look up. This is your cow posture. And then as you exhale slowly through the mouth, Pull that navel up to the sky, round through the upper back. Keep pushing the mat away with your hands and your shins. Bring the chin towards the chest. So find some space between the shoulder blades here. This is your cat posture. Okay, let's inhale again. Into cow posture. Maybe you can go a little millimetre further every time. Exhale into your cat posture. And again, inhale. And exhale. Then come back to that neutral tabletop. Take your knees nice and wide. As wide as the mat if you need to. Toes come towards each other when you do that. And then pull the hip creases back. Drop the hips towards the heels. Don't worry if they're not reaching. Reach the fingertips forward and take your forehead down towards the mat. And again, don't worry if it's not yet reaching. So forearms are on the mat at the moment. So if your forehead's not reaching the mat, you can do one potato, two potato, and rest your forehead on there. You can bring it onto a cushion. If you've got any yoga blocks, you can use those. And if your hips are not yet uh, reaching your heels, then you can pop a cushion under there as well. So your practice, you do what's right for you. And it's okay if you want to have a little kind of wriggle around here. Bring the focus back to the breath. Let everything feel heavy. So this is child's posture or balasana. Now on your next 
next exhale, reach those fingertips as far forward as you can. So it's just the fingertips on the mat. So now you'll really feel a stretch through the arms, down through the shoulders, down to the ribs. And you'll feel a stretch from the tailbone to the crown of the head. Now lift the head slightly, take the hands over to the right hand side of the mat. Try to place the left hand on top of the right and let the head just drop down, just cradle it in the arms. Keep creeping those fingertips forward and gently push that left hip down towards the left heel. So you feel a stretch down the left hand side of the body, down through the ribs, find some space between the ribs there. Breathe. Now after your next exhale, bring your hands back to centre. Take an inhale. As you exhale, bring your hands over to the left hand side. Try to place the right hand on top of the left. And now exactly the same the other side, so you're trying to gently push that right hip down towards the right heel, creep the fingertips forward, let the head drop down and cradle in the arms. Breathe. And after your exhale, bring your hands back to centre. Stretch those fingertips forwards. And then on the inhale, come up onto your hands and knees and bring those knees in a little bit. Now on the exhale, come down so your face down on the mat. And if you do a little bit of a face, you know, face, what's it called, uh, face plant down to the mat, that's okay. All right, so take the arms out in front of you, like your superwoman or superman, and stretch the feet out behind you. And just take a moment with the forehead down to the mat. Take an inhale and exhale. Now as you inhale again, lift the head, lift the left arm, and at the same time lift the right leg. Now keep the breath flowing here, it's really tempting to hold the breath, but keep breathing. The breath always powers the postures. Keep breathing, keep stretching between the left fingertips and the right toes. And on your next exhale, release, take the forehead right down, take an inhale, and an exhale. On the inhale, lift your head again, lift the right arm, lift the left leg. Stretch from those right fingertips to the left toes, keep breathing. Exhale, come down to the mat, forehead down to the mat. Take an inhale. As you exhale, bring the arms down by your sides. This time as you inhale, lift the head and shoulders. Lift both arms like aeroplane wings. Lift both legs. Just do your best. Inhale. Exhale. Keep breathing. And on your exhale, slowly release. Take the arms out in front of you again. Forehead down to the mat. And 
and after your exhale, bring your elbows back so that they come underneath your shoulders. Forearms are parallel to each other like railway tracks. So this posture is called Sphinx. It's a nice little back bend. If you're already in too much of a back bend, if this is hurting, just take the elbows a little bit further away from you. But if you're okay, press the forearms down into the mat so you feel the arms and shoulders engage. And when you press the forearms down to the mat, the neck will lift out of the shoulders. Now try to imagine here that we're lifting the spine up, we're lengthening the spine before we even try to bend it backwards. You are in a back bend here, but I want you to think about length in the spine. So lifting from the crown of the head. Imagine the tailbone is really heavy, that fused part of your spine, down, right down at the bottom is really heavy and melting downwards. Imagine it kind of melting down and sliding backwards. Relax the buttocks. It's really, really, um, everybody subconsciously clenches their buttocks. All right, just relax the buttocks, relax the thighs, relax the legs. And keep pushing that mat away from you with the forearms. Breathe. stay here if you want to or you can try taking the hands a little bit wider seal like seal flippers and gently pushing through the hands you don't have to lock the arms as soon as you do that you probably find that your buttocks have squeezed again relax them relax 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 you've really got to focus on them to do that so remember we're lifting from the crown of the head Pushing the mat away, the closer that you bring your arms in, the more of a back bend you get. So do what's right for you. Keep breathing. And then we're going to slowly, slowly release on the exhale. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Press through the hands. Come onto your hands and knees. Do this really slowly from the back bend. Coming back into child's posture, but keep the knees a little bit closer together this time. Pull those hip creases back. So from the back bend, now we're draping the spine forwards over the knees. So where you've compressed the vertebra, now we're kind of releasing them. So nice and slowly do this bit. And then when you're ready, coming back onto your hands and knees, check your alignment, check position of your hands, position of your knees. Okay, so now I want you to lift the right leg, bend the right leg, flex the foot, and as you inhale, look up and push that right foot up to the ceiling. Keep pushing the mat away, so we're not crunching down into the shoulders, we don't want to do that. Keep a little soft bend on the elbows and try to keep everything on this side like you're against a wall on your right hand side. Then as you exhale slowly, bring that forehead towards the knee, knee towards forehead. So round through the upper back here, push the mat away with the hands. Inhale. Push that foot up. Don't worry about how high it's going. Focus on what you're feeling. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Keeping that neck long. Exhale. Then place that right knee back. Check it's underneath the hip. Let's do the same on the other side. So lifting the left leg, bending the left leg, flexing the foot, 
Take an inhale, push the mat away with the hand so the neck comes out of the shoulders. Push that left foot gently up to the ceiling. Foot is flexed like you're trying to get the sole of the foot on the ceiling. Exhale, slowly bring that knee towards the forehead, forehead to knee. Inhale, look up, push the foot up. Remembering to try and keep everything on this left hand side like it's against a wall. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. And then slowly place that knee back. Okay, we'll try a bit more of a challenge now. If this next posture, I call it Royal Sunbird, if it's too much, if you are not getting hold of your foot, then it's okay. Just practice the one we've just done. So, lifting the right leg, bending the right leg. You can point the foot or you can flex the foot here, it doesn't matter. Lift the left arm. This is particular where you need to be hip width and shoulder width apart. Otherwise it's like trying to balance on a tightrope. So check that you have got your wrists underneath your shoulders and your um, knees underneath your hips. So lift the left arm and then take the left arm round. See if you can find your foot. Sometimes it's kind of surprising where it is. So maybe this is where you are not getting hold of your toes. So that's okay. If you've got a yoga strap, you can, or a dressing gown belt, you can loop it around your foot, try that way. But if not, just repeat the one that we just did. Or just practice this bending of the knee joint here to try and get hold of that foot. So if you've got hold of your toes, maybe you can get hold of the shoelace part of your foot. Maybe you can get hold of your ankle. And then if you've got, wherever you've got hold of, push the foot into the hand and up so you feel the opening of the left shoulder, the back bend and a stretch on the right quadriceps. Keep breathing. If you've got your balance and your focus, maybe you can look over that left shoulder, breathe and then slowly, slowly Release. Now try not to let everything kind of slingshot back. Try and place everything back. Nice and slowly. Okay, let's try the same on the other side. So lifting the left leg, bending the left leg, flexing or pointing the foot, doesn't matter. Lifting the right arm, taking that right arm around. Maybe you just get hold of your toes. Maybe if you've got long leggings on, you can get hold of your leggings, that's fine. Practice that first. So get hold of the toes, or the shoelace, or maybe the ankle. And then slowly pushing that foot into the hand and up, you'll feel the right shoulder open. You'll feel a nice little back bend, so looking forwards and upwards. Stretch on the left quad. And if you've got your balance, Try looking over that right shoulder. Breathe. And if you fall over, it doesn't matter. No one can see you. Just breathe. And then slowly, slowly, slowly release. Hand back to the mat. Knee back to the mat. Take a moment in Velasana. Bring your focus back to your breath. And if that's tough on your wrists, and I'm struggling with my wrists at the moment, so if that's tough on your wrists, just scoot your arms behind you. Rotate your hands, rotate your wrists rather. Breathe. So really let the shoulders go heavy here. Audible exhale. Now 
reach those fingers forward again, reach as far forward as you can, leave the hands there with your hands in line with your shoulders, come up onto your hands and knees, so now your hands are in front of your shoulders, tuck your toes onto the mat and just lift the knees, just a couple of inches off the mat, now push the mat away with your hands, Feel the engagement through the shoulders. Turn the biceps slightly forwards. Feel that engagement of the core. Light a little fire in that belly. That's what we're doing here. And then slowly, slowly kiss the knees to the mat. Always treat your knees like porcelain. Come back into Balasana, so feet flat. Pull those hip creases back, take an inhale here, exhale. Now on the inhale, come back up, hands are in front of the shoulders, tuck the toes onto the mat again. This time we're going to lift the hips up and back. Now keep the legs bent, this is head down dog. So keep the knees bent so that you can lift the hips up and then bring them back. Imagine bringing your heart to the front of your thighs. So I don't want the weight on the hands, I want the weight really evenly on the hands and the feet. Rotate the biceps forward to open the chest, ears are in line with the arms, get that nice straight line from the tailbone to the crown of the head and then you can start gently pressing through the heels. Don't worry if your heels are not reaching the mat yet. You're trying to make a nice upside down V shape but focus more on the sensations than the shapes you're trying to make. Breathe. Now look up at the hands and however many steps you need, walk the feet to underneath the hips. Feet can stay hip width apart, let the head drop down. To use the weight of the head, again keep a little bend in the knees, you don't have to straighten them. Now on your next inhale, straighten the legs, lift the head, this is your halfway lift. So this is where you now find some length in the legs, so straighten the legs, doesn't matter where your hands are, doesn't matter if they're on the mat or on the shins or even above the knees, wherever they need to be for you to straighten the legs. So find some length in the legs, length in the spine, so reach the crown of the head forwards, Reach the tailbone backwards, suck in that core, breathe. Now in your next exhale, let everything drop down. So use the weight of the head to bring the torso to the thighs. Bend the knees if you need to, and most people do need to. Let the arms go heavy like a ragdoll. Okay, so now press through both feet. Imagine these feet a big rectangular box. Press through both feet, bend the knees, sweep the arms up above the head. Reach, 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 reach. Press through the feet, reach from the crown of the head rather than the shoulders. Kiss the palms together. Exhale, bring the hands down to heart centre. Take an inhale and an exhale. So again, press through both feet, little bend in the knees, sweep the arms up above the head, kiss the palms together. As you exhale, take a swan dive down through the mat. So cut down through the air, let the head drop down, bend the knees, inhale into your halfway lift. Exhale, let everything drop down, bend the knees if you need to. Inhale, press through the feet, sweep the arms up, 
Kiss the palms together, reach up, reach up, reach up. Exhale, hands down to heart center. Inhale, exhale. Lovely. Inhale, step back with the right foot. Lift the arms like you are holding a beach ball between the hands. So this is called warrior one. Really common yoga posture. There's three warriors. I love all these postures. So harder than it looks to get right. The left foot is pointing to the short end of the mat. The right foot is roughly 45 degrees. The more you turn it out, the harder it's going to be to keep the hips squared to the short end of the mat where they should be. So turn that right foot in if you need to. So bending the left knee, dropping the hips down, but at the same time lifting from the crown of the head so you've got some length in the spine. Push the mat away from you with that left foot and that right foot. So push down through that right heel. Arms are nice and engaged, but shoulders are still dropped away from the ears. So warrior one. Okay, from here, bring the arms down, bring the weight onto that front leg, pivot from the hips, lift up the right leg, trying to make a letter T shape. This is a version of warrior three. So try to make that standing leg nice and strong and engaged. Look forwards rather than downwards. Push out through that right heel and then slowly, slowly bring that right leg back to join the left. Excellent. So now we're going to do the same on the other side. Step back, arms up, warrior one. So bend in the right knee, dropping the hips down but at the same time finding some length in the spine lifting from the crown of the head. Arms are nice and engaged. So engage all the way to the fingertips. Arms are strong here. Breathe. Now bring the arms down. Step the weight onto the front leg. And if you just stay here, that's absolutely fine. You're building muscle and bone in that standing leg. If you can pivot from the hips, lifting that left leg, pushing out through the left heel, looking forwards rather than downwards and using your arms to help you balance like aeroplane wings. And then slowly, slowly, bringing that left foot back to join the right foot. So if you're losing your balance and you're wobbling all over the place, it doesn't matter. It takes a bit of practice. Just persevere. Okay, back into warrior one. Arms up. Now keep those hips squared to the short end of the mat in warrior one. So we've just gone from warrior one to warrior three. Now we're back in warrior one. We're going to rotate that right arm back and drop into our warrior two. Again, really common posture, really strong posture. I love this one. Strong, strong, strong. So think strong, be strong. So in warrior two, the trick is to try to keep the shoulders stacked above the hips rather than lean forward. Check that this left knee is above the right ankle or behind is fine. If you're just like this, that's fine. Okay, don't worry about dropping the hips too low little bit at a time. So check that this left knee is above the ankle or behind it, not to the left of it, not to the right of it. Okay, just look down, don't assume. And then tug of all between the fingertips, really pushing down through both feet, tug of all between the fingertips, shoulders dropped away from the ears. Right hand is in the past, left hand is in the future, your heart, your courage, is in the present. Now take an inhale, straighten that left leg, bring the arms up above the head, kiss the palms together. Exhale, back into your warrior two. 
Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Fill those lungs. Exhale. Now windmill the arms so the right hand comes down next to the left foot and you turn on the, that right foot onto the right toes. Now if at this point you need to kiss that right knee to the mat, that's okay. If you can keep that knee lifted, or wherever your right leg is, then try lifting the left arm into your twist. So push down through the right toes, push out through the right heel, keep the left knee hugged into the midline, look up at that left hand, reach up with the left fingertips so you're not dumping into that right wrist or that right shoulder. Breathe. Then slowly bring your gaze to look at that foot. Frame the left foot with both hands and it's fine if you're on your fingertips here. And then try to step that right foot back to the left foot. Inhale into your halfway lift. Exhale, let everything drop down. Inhale, press through the feet, sweep the arms up, kiss the palms together. Exhale, hands down to heart centre. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. Let's do the same on the other side. So we're stepping back with the left foot. So step on narrow railway tracks in Warrior One. Lifting the arms at the same time. Keeping a bend on that right leg. Pushing down through the feet. Stretching out that back leg. <coughs> Sorry. Keeping the hips square to the short end of the mat. Warrior One. Now, rotate that left arm back. And if you need to kind of slide the feet away from each other, that's fine. It's a good idea now to have the heels in line. Look down and check. Keep your shoulders above your hips. Keep this right knee above the right ankle or behind it. Strong in the arms, shoulders dropped away from the ears. Breathe. Strong posture. Feisty, that's why I like this one. Okay, now take an inhale, straighten that right leg, kiss the palms together. Exhale. Bend the right knee. Try not to reach forward, right? Try to keep those shoulders above the hips. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Now windmill that left arm so it comes next to the left foot. Turn your left foot so you're on your toes rather than the flat part of your foot. And then lift up the right arm. So remember you can drop this left knee down to the mat. If this is just too hard, that's fine. Lift up the right arm. Look up at the right fingertips. Keep this right knee hugged into the midline. Lift up from the fingertips and from the right shoulder so you're not dumping down into that left side. Breathe. And then slowly bring your gaze down to the foot, bring that right hand down, frame the right foot with both hands, and then step the left foot back to the right, inhale on the halfway lift, exhale, let everything drop down, inhale, press through the feet, sweep the arms up above the head, kiss the palms together, exhale hands down to heart center. Let's go again, press through the feet, bend the knees, sweep the arms up, exhale, take a swan dive down to the mat. Now both hands, either side of the feet, step back with the right foot, step back with the left foot. So we're just going to take a minute 
maybe not a minute, <laughs> to find this plank posture. Not just gym hell, but yoga hell too. So press down through the toes, press out through the heels. Try to imagine a straight line from your heels to the crown of the head. Look in front of the mat. Rotate those biceps forward slightly. If it really becomes too much, just kiss those knees down to the mat. That's fine. Suck in that core. Imagine those core muscles really strong, strengthening the spine. And then when you've had enough, kiss the knees to the mat. Take a well-earned breather in the Lassana, child's posture. And remember, if that's tough on your wrists, bring your arms down by you, scooch them back behind you. Let the shoulders go heavy, forehead down. Taking the hands in front of you, come up to your hands and knees. We're going to come to sitting, so however you're comfortable doing this, maybe you can try taking the knees to the wrists, crossing the feet at the ankles, crossing the legs at the ankles, and sitting kind of up and back. Now if your hips and knees are not up to that, that's fine, just swing your legs around, come to sitting. going to try a forward fold. We've done our nice back bend with our sphinx. Take the left leg out in front of you, bend the right leg. Now if at this point you find that this right knee is kind of hanging in the air, you can either take it a little bit lower down or you just prop a cushion, pop something underneath it if you want a little bit of support there. So gently pull that left big glute muscle. Just pull it out of the way. Think of pushing the heel away from you and pulling the toes towards you to try to straighten this leg. But actually the forward folds are always about that. These forward bends are all about um, releasing stress from the back, so stretching your back muscles. So don't worry if you keep bending this left leg, it doesn't matter. All right, so take an inhale. You can bring your arms up above your head if you want. And as you exhale, lead with the chest here. Lead with the chest and just bring your arms down. And maybe they just get to the knee, that's okay. Maybe they get to the shin. Maybe they can get hold of the foot. Look forwards. Look forwards until you're fairly comfortably getting your torso to your um, left thigh and your forearms are either side of your shin, then you can take your forehead down towards the knee. But until that point, look forward. Now if you do, so you're getting a really nice stretching out of the back muscles here, releasing the stress. I always, um, I always visualize my stress. I actually give it wings and I picture it flying away, just leaving me, leaving the body, it's not needed. So, you're releasing stress from the back. If you want to also practice pushing that heel away and pulling the toes towards you, if you've got hold of your foot, then you're getting a nice hamstring stretch as well. But don't worry about how far down you are. Focus on that stretch through the back muscle. Now, if you're getting a little bit of pain in this lower back, a little bit of discomfort, I've got the slightest niggle there, then just take that right hip back a couple of inches and you'll just find it releases that sacroiliac joints much nicer to do it this way. Breathe. And then slowly, slowly release. Let the hands slide up the leg. So it's nice to get this nice upright spine here to lift from the crown of the head before we use the hand to lift that right knee and swap over to the other side. So the right leg goes straight, bend the left leg. Again, just gently 
pull the glutes. Nice, just pull your bum out of the way, that's what you're doing. Supporting that left knee if you need it. Take an inhale. Now remember, lead with the chest, so think more cow posture, where our back's like this, rather than cat posture, where our back is curved, or rather where it's rounded. So think of, um, yeah, leading with the chest. If you've got a mirror in front of you, you should be able to see your um, chest, not the crown of your head. So gently, 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 wherever you can get to, is fine for you. So imagine releasing the stress from the back, stretching out through the back muscles. Remember, if you've got a little bit of discomfort in that lower back, just push that left hip back a couple of inches. Breathe. And then slowly, slowly release, slide the hands up the leg. Come to this nice upright spine with the shoulders dropped, lifted from the crown of the head. Then use your hand to lift the knee. You can take both feet on the mat, hands behind you. Have a little windscreen wiper. That's always nice to kind of release off the legs. Okay, little abdominal posture before our final spinal today. So, a little bit of abdominal work. With your legs bent, take your hands to the back of your thighs. Lift the chest, drop the shoulders. And then pick your feet off the mat and just find your balance point on your hips. Remembering to keep the chest lifted, keep the shoulders dropped. So maybe from here, you can now bring your legs into tabletop. You're going to feel this on your hip flexors, these bits here. And then if you're okay like this, so you can stay like this if you want to, but if you're okay like this, try taking the arms out. Keep the chest lifted, keep the shoulders dropped. And then just a little bit of work on the abs, not much. Take the left hand over to touch the right. Then bring both hands over to the other side. This is really good for your oblique muscles. Let's do this again, nice and slowly, mindfully, rather than just thinking, oh God, let's just do this 10 times and get it out of the way. Slowly, slowly, you can do as many as you like. You can do as few as you like. That's fine. Last one. Hug the knees to the chest, take the feet down, give yourself a hug. Maybe you can get hold of opposite elbows and take the forehead to the knees. Breathe. Slowly coming down to the mat. Hello, Bobby. Hello. You're back again. Hello. So lift the chest, drop the shoulders. You get this curve in the thoracic part of your spine, which is what you should have. That's your natural posture. But we don't want to come down to the mat with that curve in the spine because we'll have a big gap. So pull the navel into the spine, round through the upper back, and then you can come down. Lower back, middle back, upper back, shoulders, head, comes down to the mat. Now, take the arms wide like a crucifix. We're going to do our final spinal to reset the spine. Lift the right foot off the mat. And lift the left foot off the mat so you've got your legs in tabletop. Now slowly, using your core strength, place them, don't let them drop, place them over to the right hand side. 
So you get a nice twist through the spine, stretch through this big gluteus hip muscle here. And at the same time, turn your head, look down the left arm. Breathe through this. After your next exhale, bring your head back to centre. Use your core muscles here to try and lift both knees and feet back up. And if it feels nice to have a little roll around on that lower back, everyone's got kind of different, you know, you might have a really bony spine and hips. You might have a really skinny mat that you're practising on, so this might not be very comfortable. But if it feels nice, you can do that. And then slowly, slowly, take an inhale, and as you exhale, place them over to the left hand side. Try not to drop them like a sack of spuds, that's not very yogi. But if it happens, it happens. Turn your head, you look down the right arm. Relax, so breathe through this nice twist you're getting through the spine. Breathe through this stretch through the hip. And if your pet wanders in for a little bit of pet therapy, you can always stop for a little bit of pet therapy. And then bringing your head back to centre, engaging your core to lift those feet and knees back up. And let one foot drop down to the mat, then the other foot drop down to the mat. Push the right heel away from you, push the left heel away from you. Time for Shavasana. So Shavasana is that state in between asleep and awake. Of course, if you nod off, that's absolutely fine. That's what your body needs. But this is for the moment where you really let everything relax. Let everything melt. Feel the earth supporting your weight. Take a deep inhale through the nose. And a slow exhale through the mouth. Check your breathing from the abdomen as you inhale, belly rises, as you exhale, belly drops. Now just give yourself a little body scan, starting with the toes, work your way up through the ankles, let everything melt, let everything soften, knees, hips, all the vertebrae of your spine, your shoulders feel heavy, the elbows, the wrists, everything's melting, relaxing into the mat. Relax your neck muscles at the back of your neck. Let your lower jaw drop away from your upper jaw. Let the tongue drop away from the roof of the mouth. Soften your eye sockets. Imagine softening the cheeks. Soften your forehead. Feel the scalp melt. Let everything relax.
slowly reawaken from Shavasana. Deepen the breath. Bring a bit of movement back into your toes, your fingers. Maybe rotate the ankles, rotate the wrists. Turn your head from side to side, whatever you need to do to reawaken the body. Maybe you want to lift the arms up above the head and stretch out. And then bending one leg at a time. Turn slowly onto your right hand side and make this nice little curled up fetal position. And just take a few breaths here. I'm still getting a bit of pet therapy. And then when you're ready, pushing through that left hand, slowly, always do this slowly, bring yourself back into that easy cross leg posture we started in. When you're back in your cross leg posture, rest the hands on the knees. You can pinch the thumb and forefinger together if you like, it kind of seals in your energy from your practice. And sitting in this cross leg posture allows prana to rise up through the body, through this central meridian here, to the crown of the head. So lift from the crown of the head, drop the shoulders, Closing those eyes gently. Now take an inhale, lift the arms up above the head, join the hands in prayer. Bring the hands down, touch the thumbs to that third eye chakra in the middle of your forehead, then bring the hands down to heart center. Take a deep inhale through the nose, and as you exhale slowly through the mouth, get rid of anything that no longer serves you. One more time, inhale. And exhale. With a peaceful mind, gently flick open the eyes. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.